All right, so I'm doing a demonstration <clears throat> for something called fumato, and it is a technique that artists have used for a while. Salvador Dali used it quite a bit. He actually called it sfumato, which is uh, it's one of those things that denotes some other sort of um, atmospheric perspective ideas. Um, but Dali always liked to you know, misuse verbiage or whatever. But essentially, this is one of the methods that you can use for your something from nothing project, uh, meaning that you're starting with a completely blank piece of paper. You're doing something fairly randomized on that paper. And then the problem is, or the drawing objective is, that you're gonna create something out of that, some kind of an expressive drawing. Whether it be um, objective, highly objective, whether it's somewhat abstract, whether it's not objective, um, media choice is up to you, honestly. And remember, this is one of those alternative assignments you can use to substitute in <clears throat> for one of the ones that maybe you've missed in the past so that we have you know, excellent uh, finishing strength here with drawing one. So what I've done is I built like a little apparatus, um, recently repaired my door, and so I had this old thing here, um, hot glued that to the back of a piece of uh, masonite. I just hung that from my, um, from my garage glider, my garage door glider up in there. And I'm doing this in my garage because it involves flame and candles and stuff. I'm pretty sure that I don't want to smoke up the house or start any kind of uh, <laughs> um, smoke alarms going off. But it's a good idea to have water around just in case it gets out of control. Um, that kind of thing. And you definitely wouldn't want to have anything that would be um, that would be flammable in here. But I like to suspend it so that I can kind of like hold my candle and control the smoke as it's going. The larger the flame, the more it's going to deposit. And we want to get that up onto the paper as close as possible. It's cool to experiment with this. We want to get as close as possible, but we don't want to burn the paper. Um, so it's kind of cool to get it on there and then experiment with tilting the paper a little bit. See how we can trail that and distribute some different types of kind of smoky, foggy textures, values, that kind of a thing. And I have some different candle sizes here. These are old candles from like when my wife and I got married. Um, and so they have really long wicks and uh, I let them burn for a while so they deposit a lot of soot. And this soot should remain fairly permanent on there. I'm not going to smoke the whole thing. I just want to smoke areas that I can work with. Kind of like this corner building up like this. Experiment with angling the candle because as you angle the candle, what you're going to see is that it's going to deposit kind of a different type of soot. Um, it's going to start burning off some of that wax. And sometimes you'll get these really beautiful little um, suggestions and, and mark making just, you know, through the atmosphere and through uh, the de deposition of that, of that soot as such. I think I want to build this area up down here a little bit, kind of liking the effects that I have up in here though. And I want to leave some space up in there for me to work with. It's a good idea to spray this with some matte fix um, or workable fixative if you are worried about it coming off. But honestly, most of my soot stays on there pretty well. Um, I'm probably going to go with a little bit of graphite on this to finish out my drawing as such. Okay, one thing that's kind of cool to experiment with too is like blowing out your candle and then seeing how much of that soot you can deposit on there. So I'm just going to hold it right above one spot here, see what I can get going on there. I've got a tea light and I know it's not going to deposit much, but I'm going to mess around with that a little bit too. Um, it's in one of my little, oh, it burned out. <laughs> well, never mind. But I know that I could probably, if I got a good flame inside of here, I could control like a sphere in here and I could maybe like move it around or a circle rather. Um, but I had a lot more success with this bigger candle here that we have inside of like a, an old dusty candle holder. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and try for like a shape there if I can. This is the one earlier when I was practicing this before shooting the video that I accidentally burnt my paper with because it contained a lot of heat inside of here. But again, I can't stress enough, be careful. I don't want y'all burning your folks' houses down or whatever. Just gonna kind of see if I can get that to deposit in kind of an interesting oval way, maybe spherical way. I'm not really getting much out of it and it's kind of starting to burn the paper. 
Looks like my first candle really was the thing. I'm gonna track that on there and see what I can get out of it. That could be kind of interesting. So more or less any way that you can think of creating like randomized marking on here, something that's uh, difficult for you to control. I'm gonna show a couple of other demos on ways that I do this. That's eh, okay. I still really think that I'm most satisfied with some of the stuff happening in here. So feel free to experiment with this. And again, um, it's your choice in terms of what you do with this piece. <clears throat> so good luck with it. I look forward to seeing any of these if this is something you do choose to do with, uh, with your alternative assignments. Um, should be a lot of fun for you, I think. Take care. Have a good weekend.